pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight before we sing our last couple of songs. Dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful and thankful we can come back tonight and worship you even more. Lord, you are worthy of our praise. And Father, we thank you for the gift of your grace and the gift of forgiveness that's available through Jesus. Father, we pray tonight that you'll use Randy to speak to our heart as we fellowship and focus and uh, listen to the teaching and preaching of your word. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing nothing but the blood of Jesus. When what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus for my part of this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus for my cleansing, this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Sing the chorus. Oh, and oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. Oh, I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Give the Lord praise. Give him glory. You may be seated. Brother Randy, you are up, my friend. Are we singing? Okay, well, never mind. You're down. You're down. You're down. I didn't think we got the words in time. Pick you up. And it flows from deep within. There is a fountain that frees the soul.
you see her life, oh, it was ruined and wasted, and her soul was bound for hell, oh, but then If you, if you drink of this water, you'll never thirst again. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise team. That was beautiful. What a beautiful day it has been. I, that sun was shining. It's, it's warm again. Sandy loves the warm weather, so when it started getting a little chilly out, she wasn't a happy camper. I, on the other hand, uh, I, like, I like it being a little cooler because I've got a few more layers than she does. So, But loving this weather, loving this time of year. Uh, you know, we're in the season of thankfulness now, and we are thankful for our Savior. And, and I'm thankful for those that are here, for the body of believers that are coming in, that are here in God's house tonight and that are watching online uh, to receive a word from the Lord. And when you came in tonight, I hope you got an outline uh, entitled False Teachers uh, Deception. And we're in Second Peter Chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. And Brian, did you not get an outline? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Walter. All right, we'll get an outline in your hand there, sir. It'll help in taking notes on what we're, what we're going through here. Uh, as we've been studying the letter of 2 Peter, we've seen that he's, he's started this letter out, the, really the first two chapters, reminding us to be in God's Word, reminding us to be diligent. And he's really focused his uh, second chapter of this letter on watching out for false teachers. And uh, we looked at their corruption the corruption of false teachers on Wednesday night, and then tonight we're looking at their deception. 
So, uh, again, I hope you got an outline and you're prepared to take some notes. Before we get started, we do have some prayer needs. Uh, Miss Fay is out of the hospital, but now she's in the rehab center. And what's the name of that again? Lake Highlands, the, the villages of Lake Highlands? Villages of Lake Highlands, and she's in room 517, correct? 517. Miss Marcia spent the day with her. Uh, Brian is here tonight. Brian and Marcia Johnson were longtime members here at Cornerstone, and, and it's so good to see Brian just back here to worship with us, spend a little time with us. We, we love Brian and Marcia. Uh, many of you may know, may remember them, but Marcia uh, headed up a lot of our uh, VBS, Feeding the Volunteers. She started that tradition, and Brian and uh, Marcia would be very pleased to know that we've got a group of ladies uh, and even some men that have been carrying that on, and they, they supplied our VBS workers with food every night, and such a blessing. That is such an amazing ministry that she started for us. So God bless, God bless Brian and Marcia. Uh, again, we want to, but we want to lift up Miss Faye. Uh, some of you may remember her. Uh, Lisa, it's good to have you back. Uh, Miss Faye, yeah, Lisa's been in uh, uh, Colorado now for several months at their home there, and and it's getting cold up there. So come back to Texas, where hopefully it's a little warmer for her. Uh, but we love Lisa and her husband. And uh, anyway, Miss Faye is 96 years old. 96, 96, and she is, is, she is a faithful worshiper here. She comes uh, uh, every Sunday morning. She, she tries to come in, and, and she sits, and she's usually sitting right up front, uh, but, but as she's needing help now, she kind of sits just about where you are a couple of rows back, Miss Lisa, and, and uh, we miss her. We miss her being here. Uh, she, again, she fell and, and, and broke her hip. And, and so she's in rehab now, and we're hoping that she gets better and that she's able to come back and, and be a part of our family. Uh, but, gosh, we sure miss her. What a, what a uh, just a prayer warrior she is. Uh, Jim Harris uh, got to go home, so he is home now. Uh, got to go home yesterday. Uh, please continue lifting up Jim and Cindy. Uh, uh, and lift up uh, with Cindy. She fell. I, I shared this on Wednesday night. Some of you weren't here. But Miss Cindy fell uh, while she was caring for Jim. She was going to go home and, and unload and repack and come back. And she was walking out of the hospital and fell forward and hit her eye. And she's got like six stitches on her eye here. So we want to lift up Miss Cindy for healing there as she's trying to care for Jim and just wearing herself out. Uh, and then Ken Porter, Harvey mentioned him uh, to me this morning in our prayer time. We want to continue lifting up Ken. Uh, and then we want to pray for Israel, continue lifting up Israel and everything that's going on there. And pray for our country. There's, there's a lot of deception going on in our country uh, in regards to what's happening over there. And, you know, Israel is God's chosen people. It's, it's God's chosen land. And, and that's where Jesus is coming when he comes back. So Satan's going to do everything he can to, to try to stop that. But we've, we've read the book. God's word is truth. It's true from the beginning to the end, so this is the, the one story that we know for sure how it ends, because, because God said so. Uh, so do we have any other prayer requests? Miss um, Lucy, Miss Lucy, she, she was doing better by the time church was over. She walked out to the car. She, she actually came in and, and was in for service. Uh, she was... Uh, hugging somebody, turned and just missed a step and fell and, and hit her head. Uh, but paramedics took care of her, checked her out and gave her the all clear. She came in and worshipped and, and walked out to the car with assistance from her husband and others, making sure that she's got her, her sure footing. Uh, but we will reach out to her and, and make sure that she's doing, doing, still doing well in the morning. So uh, that I see somebody else. Walter. Okay, Walter's brother Richard and his brother Kurt. Okay, Kurt for health and Richard for, for coming back to Jesus. He's in the far country right now. So, all right, well, very good, very good. Well, uh, Michael, will you lift us up tonight? Thank you, brother.
Amen. Thank you, Brother Michael. Thank you, Brother Michael. All right. Well, uh, as I mentioned, we are in 2 Peter chapter 2, beginning with verse 18, and we'll be reading through verse 22 as we finish up chapter 2. If you can stand, please do as we read God's Word. And this is what the Word of the Lord says. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them, them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption, by, for by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if... After they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. But it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb. A dog returns to his own vomit, and a sow having washed to her wallowing in the mire. Heavenly Father, please speak to our hearts tonight through your word, and it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. All right. Well, you know, uh, again, Peter's been telling us to beware of false teachers, and, and tonight we're looking at this deception that they, that they bring. And he tells us, point number one, he tells us that through folly, they target the flesh. Through folly, they target the flesh. Verse 18, for when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. Peter starts tonight telling us that false teachers use words as a tool of deception. Basically, they lie. They are liars. They speak great swelling words of deception, as Peter says. And he says, if you listen, you'll notice that their elegant and intelligent words are boastful and they're empty. Their words are just bragging and they are empty, empty words. And the sad truth is that their words and their invitation to sexual sin and immorality, it was very effective in Peter's time. And sadly, it's effective today that that same message is, is still an effective tool that they use. They're still using money, they're still using sex, and they're using power to lure you in and to, to draw you away from Christ. And Peter goes on to say that those who had just begun to escape from the lies of the culture, those attending church, learning God's word, attracted by the gospel of Jesus, but not accepting him as their Lord and Savior, found this false teaching, the words of these men, very hard to resist. Again, it's still happening today. It was happening in Peter's time, and it's happening today in our time. These false teachers sound intelligent. They sound like they know what they're talking about. And, and some of their words, they, they, can, they can fool us if we're not in God's Word, if we're not studying it, if we're not coming together for Bible study, if we're not watching online, if we're not able to be here, if we're, we're not learning as much as we can from God's Word. And, and that's true today, that those that, that don't have a true relationship with Christ, just like those in Peter's time, they're easily swayed by these temptations. Again, money, sex, power, all those things. And and some people think of false teachers just being here in the church. You know, uh, as, as I've, I've shared, uh, Sandy and I talk after, after, I, after messages and whatnot, and Sandy will critique me, and I love that because she keeps me in line. And, and she said, you know, uh, I know the other night was, was we were moving fast and furious. There was a, an important ball game on that some people wanted to see, and, and it was a great ball game. But... But there was lots of things going on, and, and she, she said, you know, you, you mentioned false teachers, but the, the focus felt like it was on false teachers within the body. And, and, and I, you know what? You're right. False teachers are in our neighborhoods. False teachers are in our workplace. False teachers are those who share a message that is not of Christ to turn us from Christ. 
They, they make it sound good, but again, they're turning us from our Savior. And, you know, they're like wolves in sheep's clothing, as, as God's Word says. They mingle among, among us and they spread lies. And, and you know, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe they speak badly of the church. You know, they don't go to church and they give you a hard time for going to church because they had a bad experience or whatever it is. And, and they try to convince you that coming to God's house, you're just wasting your time. I've got a better way. I, you know what? Maybe if you just did things and, and watched online or just got on your phone and, and went through a few things, you'll be okay. No. We need to, to be together. We need to be learning from God's Word through Bible study, through preaching, through teaching. Uh, but what they do is they twist the truth. They, they touch your emotions. They try to find things that get you worked up and really turn you away from Jesus. And, and Peter says that they use great words of swelling emptiness is how he said it. And they try to convince you to buy into their truth. Not the truth, their truth. And I love the way that Paul said it because he said that they tickle your ears. 2 Timothy 4 verses 3 and 4, this is what this is what Paul said. Let me just drop my place marker. He said, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Paul was warning us. Peter was warning us. God's word is warning us to be careful. Don't let people tell you a good word without it being from the word. Don't let somebody just, just work on your emotions because that's what false teachers do. And, and with that, how do they do that? Again, if you're watching online, verse uh, point number two, they promise false freedom. That's some of the things that they do. Verse 19, Peter says, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. Instead of being free themselves, false teachers are slaves to corruption. False teachers, they, they again, that power, they, they like that power. They like having things over you. Uh, but they're, they're slaves to their own corruption, and they're mastered by their own sinful desires. People that are trying to lead you astray have got one, one major thing in common. It's to turn you away from Jesus. But secondly, they're, they're trying to, to get rich. They're trying to seduce you, either sexually or through your mind. False teachers have got agenda, and their agenda is Satan's agenda, and that is to kill, steal, and destroy your soul, your mind, your marriage, whatever it may be. And here's the truth about sin. When, when, what Satan tells you is, is an expression of freedom is the very thing that enslaves you. What Satan says is fun, it enslaves you. It does. Sinful desires, they drag us down. And the, the sad thing is these sinful desires, they're, they're fun for a season. But they only, they're temporary. These desires that these false teachers promise are temporary. When we've talked about this. Happiness. You can be as happy as, 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 as the, you know, the happiest person in the world. And then something happens and now you're sad. Joy comes from the Lord. Joy is internal. When we receive Jesus and we have the Holy Spirit in us, we have a joy that can't be robbed from us. Yes, happiness, sadness, uh, those, those are things that can change. But joy, the joy that comes from Jesus is permanent, permanent, and it doesn't just last for a season. It lasts for an eternity. It lasts for an eternity. Uh, but Peter said, For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. <coughs> Excuse me. But those overcome with addictions, they're controlled by them, Right? A drug, a drug addict is controlled by his addiction. And whenever a drug addict gets that drug, 
whether it's through a needle or through smoking or, or whatever it may be, they're happy for a season. But then when those drugs wear down, now they're back to either no energy, they're sad, they can't believe that they've spent their, their money on these things. Uh, it's a temporary, it's temporary. That joy that, or that, that happiness that they get from it. But that addiction is their master. And as, as long as they're feeding the addiction, they're, they're happy. But you can ask any recovering addict and they'll tell you that the addiction controls their desires. Whenever an, an addict gets money, what do they do? They go out and feed it to that addiction. Jesus promises true, pre, t- true freedom. And he releases us from the chains, the bondage of our sinful desires. When we turn it over to Jesus, he releases us. He frees us. Jesus said in John 8, 36, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. That's Jesus. That is the words of our Savior. If I set you free, you are free indeed. And then Paul tells us in Galatians 5.1 that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Don't be burdened again by those things that you ran to before for that temporary happiness. Get the freedom in Christ will give you a joy that will last a lifetime. But as for Satan and his false teachers and their deception... Point number three, Peter tells us, they focus on those who have not put a full faith in Christ. That's what, that's what these false teachers do through their deception. Here it is. They focus on those who, point A, found Christ. Who They've found Christ, but they haven't accepted him as their Savior. Mm. Well, how's that happen? Well, he, he tells us here in verse 24, If after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse from the, for them than the beginning. Who's he talking about here? He's talking about those, those that have knowledge in Jesus. They're the people that come to church and... They've heard the truth, but they haven't repented and asked Jesus into their heart for true salvation. They haven't come to Jesus and just surrendered all to him. You know what? I love love this. Michael says, I've got a seat for you here. You know what? They occupy a seat, but they haven't come to the Savior. They, they, you know, I, I, Michael, when he invites people, sometimes he'll take a picture. We got the seats, the seats for you. And I love that because, I mean, that, that is encouraging. But Peter's talking to those that occupy the seat, but they haven't obtained the Savior. You know, they're, they're here. And, you know, if they'd been saved, Peter wrote in 1 Peter 1.5, we, we just did the study on 1 Peter. He wrote this. He said that they would be guarded through faith. If they, were, if they were truly saved, they would be guarded through their faith. Their faith in Christ would help them overcome these deceptions. But John said it like this in 1 John 2, 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they are all not of us. These people, misled, distracted, and enticed by false teachers are worse off than they were before, is how he ends this verse. Well, why? Why are they worse off than they were before? Well, because they had begun to escape the sinful corruption of the world, and they had begun to associate with a community of believers inside a God-believing church, and then they were fooled by the false teachers. They, they hadn't asked, they, they didn't truly repent, and again, they just came, or... Yeah, they came to occupy a seat. Well, maybe a friend or a loved one invited them. Maybe somebody invited them to church and they came out of an obligation. They heard the word. They got the knowledge, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. They heard it. It was delivered to them. It was uh, here at Cornerstone. It, it was told to them time and time again, I promise you. And they walk out those doors without receiving, without asking Jesus for that forgiveness that he offers so freely. They weren't coming for the message. They just came to mingle. Their view of the gospel is tainted, is basically what Peter's telling us. They've 
know of Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. And point B, he tells us that they know the gospel, but they haven't put their faith in Christ. How many people do we know that, says, that, that have told us, oh, I've read God's word. I'm, I, they can quote scripture. False teachers can quote scripture and they can twist it. Satan used it with Jesus when, when, he, was, when, when he was fasting for 40 days. Satan used scripture, but he twisted it. And Jesus called him out. Jesus called him out every time. How? Through the true scripture. He shared the word of God and cast Satan away. But Peter said, for it would have been better for them to not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. It would have been better, is what Peter's telling us, that they wouldn't have heard the gospel and never been told about the way of righteousness than to know the gospel, the holy command to trust in Christ and to turn away from it. And how many times... Do we have loved ones that do that? They hear it. They hear it. And, and you know, I, I love uh, Pastor Jim. I mean, he will tell you, you know what? You could walk out this door and get hit by a bus. You don't know what tomorrow may bring forth, but you don't even know what a second may bring forth. Don't wait. Don't say, I'm going to go home and get cleaned up, and then I'll come back and I'll get saved. Well, you know, I'll get saved whenever I invite my family to come with me so they can see me get saved. That'll be awesome. No, that's what baptism's for. Baptism is a picture that I've decided to follow Jesus. I'm following in, in his commandments. I'm getting baptized because I asked Jesus into my heart. And now I'm showing you a picture of my salvation, that I'm buried with Christ and I'm raised in newness of life, just as my Savior is. That's how we, that's how we share the gospel is by inviting friends to come and see us get baptized if we get saved. But it's not saying, well, I'll get saved tomorrow or next week or mm, that was a good message, maybe next time. No, today's, today is the day. Now is the time. If you haven't truly done that, why would it have been better for them to have not known it? Because once that message has been heard and rejected or corrupted by a false teacher, it's not likely that someone will return again to believe and trust in the true message. You know, whenever you hear the word of God preached and you hear the plan of salvation and the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart and you say, I'm going to wait, and now you walk out that door, you might run into somebody who's going to talk you out of your salvation. And you know what? When God's calling on you, you surrender, you surrender all, and you surrender now. Do not wait. Because their attitudes towards the gospel and God's people is tainted. And, and once that happens, this makes it even harder for them to submit to the Lord. And Matthew said this in Matthew 13, verses 14 and 15. He said, therefore, no, wait a second. He said, and in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Matthew was quoting from the book of Isaiah. Do not turn from God's word. When God is calling you, come. When, when, the, when the Holy Spirit is, is tugging on that on your heart to accept Jesus as Savior, do not turn from him because the more often you turn, the harder your heart's going to get. And the harder your heart gets, the less apt it's going to be to receive Christ. And so we... As Christians, we've got family members, and some of them have been turned off by religion. We've, we've got to show them love. We've got to help soften that heart so that they'll receive the word. But we've also got to invite them into a loving church where they don't feel co condemned by us. We're not the judge. We've, we've learned that. Peter told us we're not a judge. Let's leave that up to, let's leave that up to God. God is the judge. But you know what? We are workers. We're servants for Christ. And it's our job to go out and share the good news with our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, people we run into in the, in the line at the convenience store. 
Just show them the love of Jesus because he could be working on their hard hearts, trying to soften them. But false teachers, uh, you know, they, they, don't, they don't want you going to God's house and being around God's people because then you gain the ability to expose them. You do. Well, how? Well, because you're learning God's word. And Paul told us in Hebrews 10, verse 25, he said, Let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another so and so much more as you see the day approaching. Paul encourages us, Peter encourages us, God's word encourages us to come together, to worship, to learn, to love, and to lift each other up. Believers need to be around other believers, lifting each other up, encouraging one another, having Bible study, worshiping together, and praying with and for one another. We need that. We do need that. And, and I, I think that, that every one of us would raise our hand and say, you know what, it was prayer that got me through my hardest times, and it was God's people that were praying for me when I didn't even know what to pr pray for. Away from church, Christians hanging out together is great. It is. But there needs to be some Bible study in, tangled in that. There needs to be sharing the scripture or else you're just hanging out. And it's good to just hang out. But we need God's house, the assembly, us all coming together to learn together. And if we're not coming to God's house but we say, well, I work with some Christians, uh, that's all I need. No, you don't. You need to get into God's house. You need to get into God's word. And you need to learn together. Because we've said it. Sometimes the way that I read something and the way Miss Jan reads something, we might read it just a little differently. And now we can talk about it. And we can, wow, you know what? I've never, I never saw that. Brother Jim, you know, when he used to do Wednesday nights, he could read one line and preach on that one, night, one line a whole entire message. And you're like, oh, my gosh. I never saw that. I read it for this. Oh, my gosh. It's amazing. That's what Bible study does. And that's what doing it together does. Because sometimes God speaks to Brother Brian. He may speak to, to, to Brother Brian a little differently than he does to me about the same scripture. And hearing it from another believer, it's like, wow, it's amazing. God is speaking to you that way through his word. But it's through his word. And it is his word. It's not Brian twisting the word. To manipulate it for what he wants it to sound like. And so knowledge does not equal faith or prove your faith. It's getting into God's word. You know, sometimes people think, well, just because I'm getting in God's word and I work with Christians, I'm good. Well, you know, you need to be around Christian believers learning together. Because Peter goes on to say that false teachers focus on those who, point number C, never truly ask for and receive forgiveness of their sins through faith in Jesus Christ. And this is what he said in verse 22 as he finishes this passage. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit and a sow having washed to her wallowing in the mire. In other words, false teachers are going to focus on people who were never truly changed in their nature. False teachers, your friends at work, your co-workers, even some family or even a false teacher up here in the pulpit or in a classroom. They're going to focus on, on those that don't know God's word and that their nature hasn't changed. Okay, that person's still doing what he used to do. I can manipulate this person. That's, we've, those, those truly in Christ, guess what? They don't get rid of the sin in their lives and become acceptable to God. They don't just get rid of the sin in their lives and become acceptable to God unless they're truly saved. But we're not perfect. Through faith in God's power, true believers are changed. We're changed in our very nature, becoming more and more like Jesus every day. We become more like him. Over time, through the power of God at work in us and in our lives and our hearts. And again, not one of us in here is perfect, but if you're saved, you're, you, you are being perfected. Christ is making you, getting you ready for that glorious day. 
And, and so, hear me, hear me, please. That you know what? It doesn't mean perfection. Uh, that that uh, that you're not perfect, even if your life has changed and your heart has changed. But you you're getting there. You're getting towards that perfection. And so, uh, uh, again, a false teacher would tell you that, oh yeah, everything's going to be perfect for you when you're. Once you get saved, life is going to be wonderful. Everything's going to be great. I promise you, it's going to be great. We still have battles. Miss Faye, her 96-year-old super Christian woman, she fell and hurt her hip. Guess what? God is healing her. He's using her. She is sharing the gospel with those workers. And when people come in to visit her, I know from this church, I know with Brian and Marcia, when, when they go and visit her and they pray with her, these workers see that. They see the love of Jesus. That's what we're to do. We are to share the love of Jesus. And, and those, but those who show evidence that they were never changed. If you're still doing all the same things you were doing before you got saved, if, if, if you haven't started, if, if there's not a change taking place in your life, then maybe you need to evaluate your salvation. Maybe it's a, it's a point that maybe, maybe you were never truly saved. Because you can't lose your salvation. Paul's not saying that, that, that you, you know what, you're going to lose your salvation. He's, he's saying that your nature should have changed. Because a dog will be a dog and a pig will be a pig. And if you're not saved, you will continue doing the same things that you've always done. Those who show evidence, that's, that's a true test. 2 Corinthians 5.17, this is what Paul told us. He said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, and old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Amen. That's what Paul tells us. So I'd ask you tonight, do you know that you know that you know that you've asked Jesus into your heart and that he's come to, to dwell, that the Holy Spirit is alive in you. Can you say without a shadow of a doubt that you've been saved? Have you been changed? Are you changing from the old new into this new creation that Christ has made through you? You can never lose your salvation once you gain it, but you can't have a false salvation. So have you truly received Jesus as your Savior? Don't be deceived. Don't let some false teacher twist the truth. Trust in the Lord. Get in His Word. And I promise you, He will He'll change you. He will change your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your Word. We thank you that, that Lord, we can come together in a building. Lord, but not just any building, your house. We can come together in your house. And, and, and Lord, we as the church, uh, as, as your word says, we are your bride. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that you love us so much. That you were willing to go on Calvary's cross for our sins. You left a perfect heaven for an imperfect people to help make us perfect, to bring us to righteousness through you. It's our prayer tonight, Lord, that if there's even one person watching online or, or sitting in this building tonight that doesn't know you in that true and saving way, that they haven't seen a change in their lives, Lord, that you would touch them tonight, that you wouldn't allow them to go out this door without surrendering to you. And if you're watching online, it's our prayer that if, if God is tugging on your heart, if he's knocking at your door, answer the door, answer it. Jesus wants to come in to your heart and, and make a relationship with you to give you salvation, to give you peace. And we thank you for that, Jesus. We thank you for those that are watching. We thank you for those that are here. We pray, Lord, that you just continue to change us, that you continue to do a work in our lives. We thank you for your word that, that is clear, Lord, on your message. And Lord, help us to get into it, to study it, to learn it, so that when we encounter false teachers in our lives, which we know we will, that we have the Word of God to stand on and we can cast them away through your name. Lord, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the work that you're doing here at Cornerstone. And Lord, we pray for your man, the 
Lord, we pray that you would deliver your man as, as our pastor. But Lord, we pray that we would wait for you to bring him and to not get ahead of ourselves. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for this body of believers. And it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Well, guys, it's, uh, it's about nine minutes to seven. If we could get together in, in, in a prayer circle and lift up some of these needs, that'd be, that'd be great. Maybe a group over here and a group over here. And let's lift up these needs. Miss Faye, uh, th there's still a lot of decisions that have to be made for her. Jim Harris and Cindy, uh, Ken Porter, but there's so many more. The, the Wolves, uh, Sherry Wolves got to get back in for, for her surgery still that they had to reschedule because of her health. And, and uh, let's continue lifting them up.